ఓకే సార్ ఐ విల్ షట్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఎస్ సార్ ఆ లైట్ షార్టెడ్ చెని స్టార్ట్ సార్ స్టార్ట్ చేయండి మేడం ఓకే గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ एवरीवन దిస్ ఇస్ డాక్టర్ ఆర్తి అసోసియేట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ స్టార్టెడ్ సార్ Okay. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Arthi, Associate Professor from some Department of CSC. We welcome you all for this five days FDP program on recent trends in computer science, organized by Department of CSC and MCA, Srinivasa Institute of Technology and Management Studies. Now I request Professor M. E. Palniwel, sir, Professor from MCA Department, to give the welcome address. హలో వెరీ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఐ ఆమ్ ఎంఈ పల్నివేల్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఎంసీఏ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ డిలైటెడ్ అండ్ ఎక్స్టెండ్ ఎ ఓల్ హార్టెడ్ వెల్కమ్ వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ టు ఎ ఫైవ్ డే ఫ్యాకల్టీ డెవలప్మెంట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఆన్ రీసెంట్ ట్రెండ్స్ ఇన్ కంప్యూటర్ సైన్స్ టుడేస్ దట్ ఈస్ అ డే వన్ టాపిక్ ఈస్ రోబోటిక్ ప్రాసెస్ automation and on behalf of mca department and csc department srinivasa institute of technology and management studies autonomous i am delighted to welcome dr p ramesh kumar garu principal dr s srikant garu vice principal and hod mca department dr d naraj garu hod csc department and today's resource person mr v ramesh senior architect dhl malaysia now i warmly welcome all the faculty members and the participants this morning to a five day faculty development program on recent trends in computer science on the first day 28 6 2020 i am very much thankful to the management principal and hod to given this opportunity now i request all the participants to enjoy the technical session thank you one and all thank you sir now i request our beloved principal dr p ramesh kumar sir to give a few words about this program good morning to all the participants i am very happy to participate in this fdp program on the topic recent trends in computer science and engineering so present a scenario given the acte knowing that the future will be a computer science so they introduced a different type of courses like iot machine learning artificial intelligence robotics 3d printing like that there are many number of courses now added so it is a challenge for all the faculty members to teach these subjects so unless until they update their knowledge in the recent area they may not do justice for the students so keeping all these things in mind so the faculty members organizing this one so first of all i have to thank all my faculty members for choosing this topic so on behalf of srinivasa institute of technology management studies i am inviting and welcoming mr ramesh dr k sangeetha dr anasuya and dr venugopal to kind of accepting as a resource persons to do this one so i wish all the participants a good luck and have a nice fdp program in this thank you thank you sir thank you for your motivational words for us now i request our honorable vice principal and head of the department mca to address the gatherings good morning to one and all on behalf of sitams we welcome you to this uh, five day faculty development program i am dr srikant hod of mca on the occasion i want to share a few words about our department mca is now a two year professional uh, masters degree designed to meet the growing demands for qualified professionals in the field of information technology mca program is inclined more towards application development and thus has more emphasis on latest programming language languages and the tools 
to develop better and faster application unfortunately because of the global pandemic and consequent lockdown the entire higher education has badly disturbed in this type of situation e learning with fdps and webinars have emerged effective option for both teachers and students fdps and webinars help help you stay update and feel connected with the subject they allow us to share and learn knowledge virtually they are they are highly interactive form to spread useful knowledge and we are much benefited with the lockdown learning webinars and fdp programs robotic process automation so today's topic and here the resource person may give the clear explanation about what is rpa and what can rpa do and what have rpa tools and how we can build rpa rpa etc and i hope everybody everybody use uh, to use this session and get benefited thank you vananda thank you sir now i request our head of the department csc dr d nagraju to share a few words about this fdp program well, thank you arthi uh, very good morning to one and all and uh, firstly i must thank uh, uh, mr ramesh garu uh, for accepting <laughs> our uh, request in his busy schedule and also i must thank the coordinators uh, dr d jagdishan garu and uh, dr arthi and dr srikanth garu and uh, palnivel garu for uh, organizing this uh, ftp program for all the faculties who are uh, i mean who are requesting for their uh, uh, growing growing careers and uh, i need to uh, share a few words about the department of computer science and engineering we as a department of computer science engineering have the 180 seats in computer science and engineering department and additionally we got an artificial intelligence branch with a 60 intake so this is an added benefit to the computer science and engineering department along with that we have the uh, nba accredited we are uh, nba accredited and uh, we are nac accredited and we have the eminent faculties to teach all the subjects within the department and we in the previous 1920 batch almost 90% of the students were placed in uh, most of the mncs like uh, tcs infosys and cts and we are looking forward to raise the, this figure to the 100% placement in the computer science and engineering department and furthermore uh, to reach uh, to reach the levels of the industry we thought that these fdp sessions uh, will improve the knowledge of the faculties to teach uh, the current trends so for that purpose uh, we are organizing more number of fdp programs in uh, on behalf of srinivas institute of technology management studies so we looking forward this cooperation from the resource persons as well as the participants to motivate i mean to grow along with the institution as well as for yourself thank you thank you one and all thank you sir uh, now we are very happy and glad to introduce the resource person of day one fdp mr ramesh udatta senior architect works with dhl in malaysia he has 16 plus years of experience in experience in it industry with tcs cognizant and dhl he has acquired global exposure while working from geographical locations like usa uk europe singapore malaysia india and consistently delivering solutions for fortune companies like ge healthcare marathon oil corporation 711 national steel singapore and world's pioneer logistics companies the dhl on behalf of sitam we welcome you sir for this fdp session and uh, in today's session the resource person is going to discuss about robotic process automation so we expect a fruitful and useful session from you sir uh, now i requ uh, request the resource person to take over the session yeah hold guys sir audio ramesh sir thank you thank you all sorry i'm on mute yes, sir. i thank thanks for your participation i'm sure in this uh, in this uh, course you will you will learn the basics of uh, robotic process automation and various tools the business use cases 
why RPA is a is a buzzword in our today's industry. So we will discuss these. Sir Ramesh, sir. Yes. Um, I'll meet. I'll meet. Uh, meet sir all. Can meet you, sir. Please. Thank you. Please meet on video, sir. Except Ramesh, sir. Right. Okay. Um, it's my desktop is visible to everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. <clears throat> again, um. You know, uh, in this uh, pandemic uh, situation, um, I'm 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 happy to you know share my knowledge. Um, through these webinars. I hope this will benefit uh, for the students who are unable to join the, uh, join the classes at the same time for the faculty also uh, an insight on uh, what we do in, uh, in our technology uh, for the business. Yeah. Okay, so let me begin with my session, robotic process automation. When we say the word robot, always, something comes to our mind is like a, a humanoid. A human uh, look like uh, a machine with uh, some level of intelligence and able to perform uh, uh, you know, similar actions like a uh, human. Yes, this is, a, this is a very practical perception and a viewpoint for everyone because this is what we are taught and we are seeing in you know, movies and people talking about it. For example, the best example in such a robot is a Sophia. But when, when you, you see, you go further, when it comes to business, there are plenty of uh, robot versions in use. If we go to automobile industry, the most popular robot for them is a robotic arm, which does same function like a human, but in a physical way. Maybe welding it or painting the cars or fixing things. But when it comes to IT, you know, in a software or in the business process, it is altogether different. You see a no physical presence for example, if we take a chatbot, it's a robot. It's a robot. But chatbot is a kind of like a, a very routine things. But when it comes to RPM, what it does is beyond you know, basic functions, basic routines. So, and um, another one is uh, come to our mind is that artificial intelligence. Yeah. So everyone, we see that a robot is equipped with uh, some level of artificial, int artificial intelligence, but uh, nobody talks about uh, robotic process automation. You know, this is uh, another area, you know, you know, information technology, which is a widely growing and uh, businesses start adapting to it. I know personally, in a very short time, less than um, a year or two, we have introduced 300 plus robots. It's like from zero to 300, maybe this can grow 3000 robots, you know, in a near future. It's not one company, <clears throat> every company or every major organization is running behind the RPA. So if you define or try to know what is RPA, this is like, uh, you know, previous generations, we talk about uh, people working shifts and they need to physically present 
and physically go there and perform certain actions. Uh, with uh, the technology and the digitization, you don't need to present physically there. You can still operate many missions and many, uh, many computers or many, you can perform the many business processes. So that is achieved through robotic process automation. So artificial intelligence and the robotic process are not the same. Artificial intelligence is a way beyond which functions into with, the, with the intelligence and pre-built intelligence nature using a machine learning. Whereas um, RPA is, um, it's, a, it's a level beyond uh, software process automation. But in software process automation is typically you define the task, you know the task, what's exactly happening, how it works, and you make it work again. So you are rerunning that task again. When it comes to robotic process automation, you add intelligence to it, some level of intelligence to it, in a way that robotic process automation helps businesses dynamically change their automation process. It is not like I design automation, this is how it works. It's, it's not automobile industry robotic arm. You go on to ask or, or, or automobile industry robotic arm to do another function, it never can do because it is designed to perform exactly the same function with a precisely precise accuracy. In, a, in a business operations, there are many cases that we need to handle. So, which this, this robotic process automation is a technology now. It has a pre-built component services and a technology which can um, scale configurable, adapt to the change on the fly, you know, at any point of time. When we define a, a RPA, RPA is a software that handles a high volume, repeatable tasks that previously required human actions. It's nothing but in the business process, whatever task is performed by human that is automated through the robotic process. In place of a human, in this approach, you will have a robot deployed into a particular workstations or a site. This is not a physical robot. It is a robot configured and deployed like a piece of software in it may be in a desktop, maybe it in server. It can go anywhere. So then this robot takes instructions, learn from us, uh, from the user. And if user instruct a robot to perform the similar activities or same activity, it will take those instructions to start repeating those tasks. That's why you say, it is a repeatable tasks. So, and uh, there is a, another clear distinguishing to understand is these are not the jobs. These are not the jobs. These are not the pre-configured, just the static jobs. These are the business processes. When we go to use case, you get to know more about it. What it does is it helps uh, you know, improving uh, the quality of the, the system, our business process, and uh, increases the potentiality. So that reason is that it's a machine, it's a robot, it can perform multitasking unlike a human. Yeah, and it enables a rapid integration. That is a big thing. So if we talk about automation a couple of years back, you need to spend a three months, six months time to design the automation process and implement it. 
if you want to uh, if there is a change you probably spend a month or two to apply those changes but uh, with rpa it's matter of a few minutes or few hours maybe days to reprogram re, re uh, you know provide updated instruction so that the program learns instantly that's what is done in uh, rpa so rpa software operates on user interface so this is the big difference between uh, software tasks and uh, business process software uh, or information technology is in a business process i'm not talking about the e-commerce websites but if we go to the back end the moment somebody places order and uh, it completes the uh, the payment process they need to contact the supplier they need to make sure that uh, there is a adequate amount of uh, inventory is available and they report to the shipper shipper comes and pick up so then they move this shipment by cargo you know from one place to another place then they start the dispatch if you see that one single order we place on amazon or flipkart probably it, it goes through at least 200 plus back end business processes in a 200 times your request your order is scanned by various systems not only one company if i place order in amazon it's not only amazon is doing the shipper is doing bank is doing and uh, the supplier is doing the receiver is uh, is uh, performing their tasks like you send a, a tracking information they receive it they are interacting they are checking where when their shipment is coming and somebody is uh, writing a recommendation about it so whole lot of process is there this is this is what the it this is what the business process all this business process they need some kind of user interface screen to interact so they interact and perform this uh, particular op op operations or our business process for example like approving uh, some export and import so government agencies to approve that okay this shipment can be imported to india this can be exported from india so all these are human actions so human action requires a user interface rpa is the one which understands various user interface uh, uh, screens or uh, tools and able to you know handle the same way how a user is doing if i go to google google.com and search for say for example samsung phone and uh, i want to find the lowest price for a particular model having a high discount if i do that teach it to rpa it will just repeat it you need to tell that okay this time not samsung i want to you know uh, i want to check it for maybe redmi or a xiaomi phone of this then it will fetch and give you right we don't know how many of such processes running in the back end but you see that information is coming to you and um, other one is the business user friendly these rpa tools are used by the business users so it is not used by by like what we said in yesterday's session full stack developer or web user it is not used by the the person who is placing order but a person who is processing your order they are the business users they use it so how rpa platform is structured how does it work uh in a typically in any software life cycle we talk about design or analysis design development testing deployment change cycle or reengineering so but when it comes to rpa it is a pretty simple and straightforward way that uh, 
majorly the RPA users not necessary to be a software programmer. There are software programmer created RPA processes as well as a business user created RPA process. So the user here, it's, it's called a user than a programmer. The RPA user, a developer is a user. Yeah, RPA developer uses uh, one of the uh, studios or, or their ID to create a automation process so in development environment. Development environment is nothing but a desktop. But <clears throat> I just took a UI path as example. And uh, once your development process is complete, these instructions are sent to one central controller. What you have in a CPU, similar to that, you have a, a, a master controller which delegates actions to various robots. It is not necessary that every robot is doing the same task. The controller delegates various tasks to uh, different robots in performing uh, various actions. So, and the controller monitors the behavior of a robot, functions and ability of the robot, how it is performing in case of any errors, issues, failure, problem, you don't need to go to the robot. You can control it from the controller. This is where the support team for robotic process automation comes. And a production environment, right? In your production environment is nothing but a user PC. Some user is performing, a, you know, um, some kind of a, a business process. That user's desktop or laptop is production environment. But when we, when we see in a typical case, we say like this is the Linux machines. They work in a cloud servers or in premises, on-premises solutions, right? It works in a, it works in a physical server. It works in a virtual service. It's not the case. This is a robot. It, it is helping you to take, in, uh, you know, delegate your routine task. It will perform that and provide you. So the typically what it does is that sits in the same um, laptop. So it executes the web application related queries, any internal applications that it needs to access or third party applications, something is already installed there. So it, it just works in the behind the scene. It is not necessary that it opens the browser and you see it, but there are such implementations also. We can, we can automate that. So typically, if you say where robot is running is in the user's uh, a PC. So the same thing, what I said, like, uh, you know, life cycle of uh, RPA. RPAs, RPA robots mimic actions performed by humans in the business process. It, it, it just do whatever you are, what you are, whatever you are as a user performing. Yeah. So, but um, if you want to go for implementing RPA, uh, this is the life cycle. The first thing is business. They need to identify the repetitive processes because it is not the whole software development life cycle. It is as simple as that. You have a RPA infrastructure, robot controlling station. You have robots available. When there is a requirement, identify the repetitive task, find out the suitable use case. Then um, the business process uh, which requires a human task, those actions are 
sequenced to orchestrate you need to identify and so something like a create a flow chart this is the your analysis plus a design and kind of ready for development so then the second process identify the your uh, rpa platform and uh, start creating the instructions these instructions can be program or these instructions can be you know small user interface functions like a drag and drop as simple as that you drag a component and you drop it you when when you drag a component say that okay this particular component runs here for a few minutes and perform this task maybe query this database filter it by some something else and uh, once you have these results prepare uh, put those results into excel sheet apply this macro macro then send email to somebody else so this is a typically human is doing but robot does and uh, once you do this uh, this uh, task uh, creation in a development the next one is uh, it's ready for business take the robot deploy the robot have these instructions injected from the central processing unit which has a task assignment for the robots so then robots take these instructions and uh, you know um, manipulate this through presentation layer however however it is it is not limited to running in the back background but it can uh, perform task you know user interface also a uh, there are plenty of uh, uh, plenty of uh, use cases uh, available for or we can use for automating through rpa you know it's this there's a plenty so it's unlike a, a typical software life cycle it is pretty simple easy and fast the most important thing here is a speed of your development you cannot spend 6 months time to create a, a, a process yeah once you have a robot you it takes uh, a, you know an hour to a day or two or a few days yeah to create a business process so typically what are the input uh, uh, methods or structures for rp as i said in the earlier example it can be web website browsing the website receive emails receive excel files spreadsheets text files data structure of the file can be anything it can be json file it can be flat file it can be xml file or excel but typically in the business process as the content is read by humans you don't see files like xmls but when you translate this into rpa it can still read it yeah for sake of understanding let us limit to human readable files excel file and it will it will be able to pass through excel file in the same way how human human does for example you want to perform aggregation uh, of uh, a report you receive you teach this robot or design that uh, uh, the flow or process it will repeat it and the next day after aggregation you want to apply some kind of a tax rules add that step from the day onwards it will perform the aggregation plus it will apply the tax rules yeah so something like a word documents so it may be receiving a, a word documents for a many purposes for example if you take a document quality check it can 
it can uh, read through the document and make sure that it comply to the uh, desired uh, standards or not. And another popular case is that PDF. PDF and Excel is what you see in the business. Nothing more than that. So all the invoices um, or the, the customer, uh, customer feedbacks, generally these come in a, a PDF files. So as a business user, if the feedback from the customer is uh, positive, so you perform certain action. If it is a negative, it requires uh, something like, you know, a callback of a, a shipment that is delivered. It provides such instructions. So it can comfortably read through the document and provide uh, or trigger such interactions. So, and there can be API calls also. API calls is not limited to what a human performs, but uh, RPA as it is a system, it can perform various API calls like querying the database and, uh, and um, you know, reading some content from maybe some, some existing application, which is an internal application, it can perform that. So then it can, uh, um, once it reads that, what it does is that mm, it follows the, uh, the instructions. The next thing is output. You have this data, robots process this data. Then finally, human is uh, producing a, um, a Word document or a human is uh, producing uh, an Excel document. But these are, these are not quite common. These are the common um, output mechanisms when the business user is interacting with the, with the user or customer. But when they, when they take input and uh, key in that system into their database, that is the major uh, cases that we see you know, uh, in a real-time implementation. So it feeds such data into database. Once it, it goes to database, then it becomes your business data. Then the, the existing software applications will use this data and perform the necessary steps. So typically uh, when you say that uh, database, it's like it can call uh, or execute a SQL statement. And uh, what is automated? Is it only reading XML file, uh, Excel files, PDF files? It is not limited to that. If you see that Windows applications, anything installed on Windows machine, you know, laptop or PC, majority of the tasks can be automated. This robot controls that process and, uh, you know, executes certain piece of code and it, yeah. It's it's uh, it's as good as that. You say, uh, for example, you are uh, printing something, or uh, once you receive an invoice, you need to print it. So you receive invoice through email, and uh, download that into a laptop. Then open that. Uh, for example, if it is a PDF document, open the PDF document. Then uh, click on a print command, it goes to print, a document is printed. Somebody will collect that document from the printer. That is a different case, yeah. So RPA is capable of performing this whole task. It is not the every email. You can really specify exactly from which user with what subject and why, whatever decision making points human reads to it, the same thing can be performed by this RPA. And uh, other one is like a Java applications. So, um, it can interact with uh, various Java applications. It can interact with the mainframe, HTML application. HTML application is nothing but a web browser. 
it can very well if you receive for example order in email they the even you know today there are plenty of companies take re, or, uh, receive orders via email they don't have a user interface they don't have a user interface somebody need to send email okay can you book this particular product for me and if the user sender email is authorized they come with a certain kind of a code person opens that email and they they will go and physically fill the order form and create the order or they will they will key in data into a purchase order placing system but same thing can be done by rpa yeah so remote applications such as a citrix Uh, if we you know that you know uh, the desktop sharing is widely done through citrix so one central citrix machine can be accessed by the whole world and um, uh, you know sap sap is one of the top uh, used systems in uh, you know business process be it you say like uh, sap for uh, Uh, HR module, you know, some kind of payroll processing, and uh, employee onboarding, or you know, CRM tools, uh, customer relationship management, um, those you know, Oracle CRM. So it's one of the popular choice, and it can even create, it can create API uh, com components like .NET extensions. Yeah. so direct data transfer it can even um, access uh, the data transfer channels like you know once you receive this one send this to ftp to somewhere it can perform that in order to send to ftp you just need to open the ftp um, yeah, software then it goes to such cases like user ready password it will key in user ready password and send it yeah so this is uh, you know even if i talk this topic interchangeably but end of the day what i am referring to is every single line of my uh, content is talking about uh, business user actions and automating that business user action adding a robot is intelligence those are the repetitive tasks but configurable on the fly it is not one rigid system developed today and uh, it will not change forever what i said that automobile robotic arm it will not ch change forever it will only perform that that action yeah so rpa is not that rpa is it is a very dynamic agile knows learn from the user you know, the way user is doing you don't need to know even you know, how to do it you, you just open um, a browser window start rpa process uh, you know let it learn you perform certain action it will repeat that of course many of the testing tools for example like uh, we talk uh, selenium is a testing tool which it does that that automation but that automation is different that is that is a testing a functionality but what rpa does is the business process it can book a, uh, a flight ticket it is like we go to the travel agent they will look for the various options whatever is the you know cost effective or shortest path having a less hops that's what everyone looks for that it can be very well done by the rpa so now let us go to what are the what are the products which uh, provide rpa as a technology the popular product in today's market is a uh, ui path is so uh, it's i would say that uh, majority of rpa implementations are ui paths uh, ui path ui path is a is a company name yeah so um, this ui path uh, programming is through visual design uh once uh, anyone goes to ui path studio there are very few components 
you just need to drag and drop create a certain action then let it listen to what you are doing it will record that then repeat that that task so it uses a macro recorders which bring the speed to the automated process so you know all the while everything you are doing it will record create a macros and repeat those why i say this this create a macros is nothing but it's a, it in its underlying technology is a microsoft yeah so microsoft you create certain uh, macros especially ms uh, uh, office is macro based yeah so um, this requires no programming experience that is why it is so popular business users able to create a automation process by themselves they don't need software engineer to create it and it does uh, you know it it does front and back end office jobs so when you say uh, we have a deployed uh, 50 robots it okay, it can be doing in a front end job or back end job what is a front end job and back end job here very simple in a front end job you need a user interface you need to key in download perform certain thing back end job okay at every day at 6 pm i'm just uh, consolidating my all the invoices that i have processed so what anyone do, does is that okay they will track everything into excel sheet at 6 pm designated time they will apply some kind of formula sum up and then send email so this is the kind of back end job so you, you you don't need to have a pc to do that if for user it is required but rpa can just do that without having any user interface interactions so its architecture is a web based web based architecture meaning is that um the robots sitting in a one central uh, control station from where it gets instructions execute and it is able to interact with the web and perform certain type of activities so it is it is it is um, kind of distributed and its underlying technologies are microsoft sharepoint microsoft sharepoint is one of the top content management systems in the world it uses elastic search elastic search is a is a database it's a json based database plus a fast search or a fast response uh, database very becoming very popular these days and uh, kibana is the dashboards so kibana is uh, is also part of elastic search products so it uses that technology the second one is a blue prism is also widely popular um blue Pr- blue prism is also the programming is by uh, visual uh, visual design so you have a, a program studio drag and drop so major implementations are back end office that's a difference you see this um the ui path is a web based primarily focusing majorly focusing on ui but this is a back end office job so lot of back end uh, office jobs like uh, consolidating the reports and uh, closing the time sheets uh, calculating the number of hours is uh, is uh, you know operated by some people see we can say that these are the automated systems what is the difference between in automation and robotic process automation the difference is you have automated system but a human is using that system to perform the job when it comes to rpa this is just replacing the human it is not replacing the repetitive uh, the the automation process you still need that automation process but that automation process kicking start and stop consolidation and closing things validations everything is done by the auto- automation uh, robotic process automation and it's a client server architecture so this is a built you know built on top of c hash up. so less about blue prism 
automation anywhere. This is also one of the products is becoming very popular. I did uh, I did uh, read a few, you know, a lot about it recently. Uh, this is a uh, founded by uh, Indian engineers. So of course, this is a US based company, but uh, CEO and founder is an Indian, even all the all the VPs and the directors are Indians. So this is a script based programming. So when you say that uh, implement a robotic process automation, you need a software engineers there. Now, knowledge in a software IT is uh, required. It uses a macros, of course, the same as the, the UI path. Yeah. So this, uh, as this is a script-based programming language, it requires uh, programming skills. So uh, business users, cannot uh, create uh, new tasks. However, it also support front and back end uh, office jobs. For example, I, I, would, I would try to say that uh, the Selenium testing, you use the Selenium testing, you can even browse through you know, website and uh, search for some content, check for some kind of a click actions is, uh, is a triggering or not. Is, is also UI, it is done by the Selenium. Similarly, uh, it can perform the front end and back end uh, jobs. This is also client server architecture and uh, it is on uh, Microsoft technology. Just think about it. In a three cases, these three platforms are foundation for this platform is a Microsoft technology. You know why? because majorly the business is, is automating the business process. This business process is running in a user PC. Maybe that is running in a Windows 10 or Windows 10, 7, whatever it is. That is why these technologies more of on the, um, you know, Microsoft uh, uh, technologies. So um, I think from now, I will spend uh, uh, about uh, 15 minutes on, um, on the business use cases, yeah. One of the popular use case for RPA and widely used is uh, in an insurance domain for claims. In insurance claim process is for the user, it looks like, okay, I'm submitting my my medical bills, I send it, and I expect a, a reimbursement, or probably if it is a if it is a kind of a prepaid, so approval approval process. But the moment you submit such a request in an insurance uh, domain, they trigger you know handful of uh, sub business processes. It's not limited to taking your request. They need to call up the hospital, make sure that uh, all, the, all the supporting documents you produce and the hospital has, you know, they do the comparison. Uh, they do validate the charges and um, they need to, um, they, they need to, go through the some kind of eligibility verifications. Let me put this way, is it not part of your software solution? Yes, it is a part of software solution. You have solutions in a software which, which fetch you this data, but it's not necessary that every time, every information is sitting in a one system. It is not. Business users, use multiple systems to complete a business process. Of course, there is a orchestration also, but still it is not everything is sitting in a one, one umbrella. So they used to use multiple systems. Uh, and uh, you know, majorly in, especially the, the end users, they receive data, you know, PDF and Excel than using a console. So, um, so the what, what they need to do is like a, in a 
this claim process requires uh, accessing uh, external systems. It is not only their their applications. Like, yes, we have a, a you know extensive level of IT infrastructure built, um, but do you have everything to process the claim? No, it is not that case. So, for example, they may need to contact the the third party providers. Uh, you know, something like uh, the the pharmacies or diagnostic centers or healthcare providers, hospitals, various other systems. So what they do is like they go to their websites, log in, and they validate certain conditions and the criteria to make sure that yes, is it is it is it the rightful claim or not hell lot of business processes is, uh, is is being done by the by the claim processing agents yeah so in fact not only that they need to contact the government agencies also for example if they are processing about a claim about an accident right they need to access government systems maybe it is publicly available publicly not available they may get to some privileges, but the government may not have integration with the insurance provider. Yeah, for example, if it needs to access FIR number, some FIR number is recorded somewhere in the document, they need to make sure that the FIR number up, uh, submitted by the patient or doctor and uh, the FIR number is in the government, you know, police station is the same or not. Otherwise, once you dispatch money, it won't come back. Somebody comes with the same FIR, uh, you know, proper FIR number, they may challenge you. So insurance company need to pay that twice. So they they don't have access to, uh, they don't have integration with all the systems. They need to go through these different systems. So that is why when uh, it is uh, implemented in uh, RPA, RPA goes to various uh, uh, these these systems. They key in the FIR number, and once the FIR number, uh, I'm just taking this as a case. So if it uh, talking about a victim, you know X Y Z, all the data from the user interface, it will read through. Then it will match from the input content. If it is a matching, it performs a certain action. If it is not, it triggers another action. Is it not the typical human function? This is not the software. It is human who does this validation. So in order to improve the quality, there can be mistakes by, can be done by human. So robotic process automation is helping. That's why insurance industry is adopting a, maybe big insurance companies, probably they may have thousands of uh, robots already running in their side. So it will make sure that, you know, insurance uh, regulatory compliance, yeah. And um, uh, that a typical claim process, it, it can take uh, uh, hours to days human effort. Yeah, so think about it. If one, uh, one agent is processing two to five claims in a day, and uh, how many agents they need to have it. And, uh, and another one is about like a human errors. Yeah, if, if it is, uh, how, how can they control these, these errors? That's where they are really adopting to this RPM. And uh, there are plenty of jobs also on RPM. So, <clears throat> so um, typically, uh, typically, what uh, we are doing is that just mimicking the same user behavior and uh, repeat those actions. If we go to the second business case, it's like in a banking for loan. So, when uh, you know anyone applies for a loan, typically. Uh, a loan application goes. Yeah. This loan application comes with a lot of deal. Like there are dozens of human filled application forms which are prone to errors. 
a, a simple mistake mistake like uh, incorrect pan number is good enough to uh, the bank to lose the money okay yeah. so these are filled in the forms there are uh, systems like uh, optical character reading uh, readers ocr tools so using this ocr tools this rpa uh, our business user uh, reads the data but what rpa does is that uh, then it will go for the uh, next level of uh, verification so from each and every field uh, if the person name is uh, written multiple times in every field is written uh, with all the you know correct spelling it ensures that quality check if not human has to do it yeah and uh, there can be case that uh, another different form of form comes um you know uh, uh, introducing new form is as a matter of like uh, re triggering this process like uh, teaching this process one more time so and um, once it reaches that application it it can trigger various uh, uh, sub jobs um, by injecting data into various databases or sending an email or you know if it is it is waiting for an email response for example say like yes i am processing loan uh, i want to get a credit score a credit score of course is available to the bank but they access credit score from a different web application so they read that credit score they again re enter this credit score re entry is a, is a repeated to job this can be done by rpa I, i'm just taking this as a one example but there are plenty of such examples there so and uh, um and uh, you know going to the other point like it fetches information provided by the customer from the form validate the common mistakes accuracy of uh, data and able to validate other vital information from different public authority systems you you see this everywhere we are talking about a, a third party system third when you have third party system you need a human when it is internal application if not today companies can integrate those two applications without having a human involvement but it is not always possible to integrate every third party system so what they do is like they will be given a privileged access to uh, those uh, those uh, third party systems they go to that and uh, you know um, fetch that information as good as uh, extracting the credit score credit score is uh, prepared by some company it's not the bank bank provides input to the credit agencies credit agencies along with the uh, government uh, regulatory they generate the credit score then there are many companies subscribing to the credit score i'm talking about a bank what if it is a small financial institution you know there are private uh, uh, institutions are there they are also doing this do they have uh, such established uh, infrastructure like uh, icsa bank or hdfc bank it's not possible to maintain such infrastructure but if this this automation you can leverage such a benefits like some kind of integration and um, what happens is after it does it it can attach a variety of content uh, to the application form and send to the approving officer so approving officer requires not only application they require a lot of supporting content the supporting content if you don't talk about a software or a it application someone in the office uh, like you know assistant they carry the physical documents so you are automating through your it process but even though you automate through it process certain certain things are not available still they need to carry it so what it does it it just copy that electronic data and attach and send to them so by doing that it improves the quality of service and reduce approval time 
that is a big thing in a in a low loan approach some customer applying for a loan and uh, the time the loan is approved is a crucial what banks are selling today is is not only the loans we say that we give you instant approval we approve loan in a 24 hours we approve loan in a, in a one hour how it is possible it is not possible with all human actions so there are such great deal of back end systems and uh, rpa is also playing its role in a, in a enabling such a, um you know uh, uh, such a, such a feature we go to another uh, website how many of you think that amazon browse flipkart website and the flipkart team go to amazon website and browse their website does it make sense as a regular user you don't really think that because you know why why amazon cares about flipkart so what they care is like what products they are selling and uh, um, about their you know order processing but that is not how business work what is called is a web scraping i'm talking about in e-commerce the price web scraping is something that maybe popularly i'll say that there are some websites provide you deals they say that if you are looking some product they say that okay this product in amazon website is sold for this price whereas a flipkart is another price and uh, maybe something like a tata quick or there is a some site right so there another price like that it, there are comparison sites but their business is that even though these uh, uh, you know big e-commerce chains what they do is like they need to know the the competitor price so how does a leading company or competitors in e-commerce know deals of their competitors do you think that these these two companies change price okay, like amazon is going to say that okay i'm going i'm going to sell this uh, this uh, samsung phone for this price next minute flipkart is going to sell that for maybe 10 rupees less than that price that's a business combination there's they they don't have such deals but with rpa what they do is that they scrape through competitors website because it is a public data anyone accessing amazon.in or flip.com so flipkart.com whatever they can see is a public anyone can see that so this robot what it does is it goes through that website search for the some certain uh, competitive products and they get the price is is this price a constantly same in amazon or flipkart for any product it changes every minute it is possible to change every minute so sometimes they give like uh, some deals maybe uh, some with uh, some coupon some credit card you get this deal xyz so the price is not a fixed price is constantly changing and the competitor also should know the constantly changing the price so how it is possible they don't have any web services using which they change data they interchange data this is creating technologies like rpa goes to their website search for all the content and uh, feeds it back a typical case that okay uh, samsung phone at 10 am from this seller from uh, amazon site sold for like 25000 rupees and a deal uh, the discount is a uh, 10% at 11 am same samsung phone 20 25500 and a discount is a uh, 9% are 8% whatever comes so this is a constantly changing what it what they do is like they prepare excel spreadsheet they prepare uh, i mean they means like rpa prepares a huge set of a spreadsheet or it will directly inject into their uh, their database 
So once the, it goes to database, then it becomes a business data. Then the um, BI, business intelligence comes into picture. It will process the whole data, understand the behavior of the competitor also. So um, we don't, uh, it, it doesn't look like a, a fair business, but this is, this is actually happening. Yeah. So those companies um, and uh, by, by doing this one, what RPA does is like um, it uh, constantly fetch these details. If no RPA, they need to appoint a lot of users uh, who does this work and uh, key, fill in the Excel sheet or key into the database. They can make a mistakes. There's a fair chance you are reading something, you, you, you not, not necessary that entering the same value. It can be possible human error. RPA will not do that. So, and another one is like this process can be executed at, you know, 24 seven, as many times as they want to collect this data. Yeah. So looking at this, the nature of the solutions created an RPA is very, very, very different. In a, in a one word, it, it does automate the business user actions, which are business process. Yeah. So before I end this session, we just take a few more cases. Yeah. The popular, um, after that three, the other popular are uh, vendor, customer, and employee onboarding. What I said earlier, SAP, employee onboarding. Employee onboarding, vendor onboarding, and customer onboarding. If you look at this, um, you know, Amazon, uh, there are hundreds of customers or registers register every day. Yeah. So these customers' data is sitting you know, somewhere. And maybe for some kind of a legal purpose or various other, other reasons, this data probably required somewhere else. So, which is done manually by the, by the operators or the people who is sitting in the backend. It is the popular case. And vendor, customer and employee maintenance. Once you onboard, there are certain things like you know tax calculations, discounts, or you know whatever uh, the payment processings, and um, and another big thing in a business is very 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 common and popular is a report aggregation. You don't believe me? Even today, I'm just talking about even. Apple computers, Google may be using Excel sheet in one of the business function areas. Personally, I know wherever I worked, there are Excel is, uh, is, is acting like a database for them, reporting tool for them. But in order to do that, they need to get the multiple Excels and uh, you know uh, merge those Excel documents into one then uh, prepare the uh, aggregation. This is a lot of manual work. We don't really think that, uh, you know, we are in a pretty advanced IT and not, not everywhere. What you see on, a, on, a, on, on the website, what you see in a backend systems are very different. You, you only see as a user, what user experience, but in a back end to make to provide such experience, there are a lot of systems, a lot of business process. And the the fourth one is a competitive pricing and monitoring. What I said, like e-commerce. Yeah. It's not only this. Think about like, for example, we take a um what is that? Uh, the online um, ticket booking. Yeah, so they also do a lot of great deal. Those are the small operator, operators. If they deploy a, a, a one robot, it will make a big difference for them. So uh, there are such vast implementations. Then CRM updates, customer relationship management, 
this is a this is the one of the heavy manual work done by the business team in the back end okay. shipment scheduling and tracking not many companies have a sophisticated it infrastructure for shipment processing yeah but they do receive and send send shipments so rpa is a, is a one of the uh, key player there and uh, finally the user setup and the configuration so i try to list uh, popular use cases but the list is not limited anything that you think a human is doing rpa can do that that is the rpa technology and um, maybe you know you know note of a courtesy is it going to replace the jobs is not the case right it is a uh, improving efficiency in operations it is providing a quality content and making a business go success go profit so of course by reducing the their cost their service become cheap so in another way yeah so that's about rpa yeah so pretty much i'm opening this session for questions sir uh, good morning yes please i'm padmaja from hyderabad sir yes tell me madam uh, thank you sir it is very informative session and i need what are the prerequisites uh, to learn uh, this rpa i'm a uh, csc background uh, faculty Mm -hmm. um rpa is a, when you know these are the three popular tools it's it's very minimal programming um but a pro programming is a plus uh, of course it is not limited to any any language but majorly i would say this way that a good knowledge of accessing a computer yeah uh, uh, the the windows pc Uh, various tools how to access those and especially ms office documents um and the the kind of macros and plus it is not only limited to the uh, user uh, drag and drop actions but requires creating a um, you know macros so um, microsoft technologies like uh, .net uh, c# Uh, and uh, you know excel macros excel macros is one of the very popular uh, way of doing the automation so this is the probably prerequisite i can say um thank you sir sir i have a blue prism at my end yep um so these days uh, i heard much about blue, blue prism so in this uh, one week uh, or five days workshop can i have this uh, a sample uh, program so that i can explore the things so like uh, when i open my system it should automatically see my fb or uh, it should automatically do something yes. what i daily do yeah you can do that pretty much that um, um what what you are expecting from me like like mail checking is a fundamental thing we do daily yes. like opening the laptop such thing whenever i open this my system should start automatically and i should check my mail yep like simple thing so that i can tell my student because that, that is not the thing in my curriculum i am a teacher understand understand i think uh, maybe you can uh, try exploring ui path um there are two reasons to it one is a uh, um it's a very popular and uh, i see more job opportunities in a ui path so uh, sir ui how to download sir uh, ui path uh, it has a uh, it uh, maybe i can share uh, the web link sir could you please uh, share that uh, blue prism free download for windows also please don't mind sir sure sure uh, in chat box sure Th thank you so much sir thank you very much 
participants if you have any queries please post it on the chat or you can raise your hand so that we will unmute you are there any query from youtube uh, no sir madam youtube youtube yes sir in youtube only no queries no queries sir they gave uh, very positive comments very informative engaging insightful that's all. very informative session that's okay but queries is, any queries is there that we have to ask sir no sir i think in youtube uh, we didn't get any queries so far i think they are also you post like this madam participant yes, if you have any queries please yes sir i will post sir in the mean while uh, in chat box uh, please post the url so that we can download blue ah uh, thank you so much it is a uh, like uh, feedback from we got i i posted it uh, okay so i am repeating this and thank you sir. it went to blue prism or ui path anything yeah i'm checking option to send everyone Sir, I'm sure. Yes. You'll stop the yeah, sir. Sure. Madam, both the links sir. Sir. Hello. Ah uh, yes, sir. Participant, madam, you yes, asked sir. some query, no? Yes. For uh, that, both the links are sir sent in the chat box. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I saw, sir. Thank you. Any other queries from uh, participants? Sir, one query uh, was posted in YouTube, sir. Ah, uh, you ask, madam. Uh, can VBA developer become RPA? One participant asked. Yes. So, Ramesh, yes. sir, please. Yes, you can be. You can become a RPA developer. Okay. When you learn one of these uh, one of these technologies. Okay. It is not maybe if the user's point of view is, I being not a business user, can I become an RPA developer? Not 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 in every case. Business users create the workflow, or automation process. it is a possible for business users to create but in a practical world it is the software engineers like you who will create the robotic process automation uh, these these processes and uh, tasks thank you sir participants any queries hello sir i am dattatreya from chandra polytechnic karnataka yes sir Yes, please, sir. RPA is the best solution uh, for BPO. Am I right, sir? E yes, we can say that. That's where the business process uh -huh. happens. So I'm under the impression that that will cut the jobs in IT sector. IT, yes. That is the. Of course, technology is good, but it may affect the BPO jobs. Am I right, sir? It is possible. It is possible, but uh, in yes. generally, if we see the there are uh, many user cases. Companies won't try to implement, um, you know, some some kind of outsourcing jobs, but there are uh, where business users 
the functional users sitting they try to their save their time you know what is this outsourcing job is the same task to oh, be done same. by the business pro, business yes. user who is sitting there yes. so some task is there so and uh, when uh, i i just give one example so we are creating a solution that is for optical um, character recognition yes our view is that you know why do we kill those jobs and pay these mm. big companies by introducing that so we let that go yeah but if it is error prone it is troubling the business then we need to find a solution in such case it may impact i would not say that it is replacing it it is a possible enhancer we we need to see that way any other queries participants dear participants anybody is having any query sir it's again me sorry to ask you <laughs> one more time sir uh, could you please show me the uh, steps uh, to install blue prism i am trying to do now ma'am there are plenty of uh, tutorials available from blue prism and the ui path uh maybe you can uh, take a look on those okay okay sir i i would suggest that please start with the ui path any other queries participants Okay, Arthi, you start there. Okay. Yes, sir. sir, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Tell me, sir. Madam, Sri Sri Kanth sir. Ah, hello, sir. Hello. Sir, uh, sir, we go for what up, thanks, sir, for today's session. Okay, sir. Then complete it. Ah, sir, Jayadi Singh, sir, please. Madam, sir, chapan is sir there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. thank you sir uh, now i request uh, dr d jagdishan the convener of this program uh, to give the vote of thanks good afternoon to everyone good afternoon everyone first i thank you our management principal vice principal hod and uh, our coordinators for supporting this fdp i would like to thank our resource persons Ramesh Garu for accepting our request and they gave today sessions lectures for his busy schedule. Okay, once again I thank to our resource persons. Uh, and also thank to our participants for 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 involving this FDP and watching the videos. And posting queries in both Zoom and also YouTube. Thank you, Anandal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So one more, uh, yeah, one more point. So they are participants. So uh, remaining four days, YouTube link and the Zoom link will be posted before eight o'clock on the day. 